Keeping On looks at the journey of aging through the power of music. Hello, I'm Van Owen Hayes, host of the podcast Keeping On, which is brought to you by Walker West Music Academy, where they harness the power of music to foster academic achievement, success, healing, and joy. What helps you keep on doing what you do? Is it music? Music can comfort, heal, inspire, and uplift. It can make you want to sing, dance, tap your foot, create, and learn. Music can help you keep on keeping on. Today, we're going to have a discussion of coming together through music. It's a conversation with community connectors Nick Kalik, Naida Presley, and Keith Baker to discuss their community involvement and the importance of music in advancing community interest while acknowledging and lifting up our cultural roots. First, I'm going to ask you to introduce yourselves, and I'm going to start with you, Keith. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, thank you. Um, Keith Baker, I'm the executive director for Reconnect Rondo, the effort to uh, connect the historic Rondo community with a physical structure called a land bridge. Uh, been in the Twin Cities for some 35 years, originally grew up in Duluth, Minnesota, and uh, have made uh, St. Paul uh, my home to love and embrace and to champion. Thank you. And welcome, Naida Presley. Thank you, uh, Van, for having me. I'm Naida Presley, and I am the retired executive director of Aurora St. Anthony Neighborhood Development Corporation. And after I retired from there, I've been retired for three years, I decided I would start my um, consulting company, and it's called New Life Possibilities. And I like to think of looking at the opportunities, but not only just the opportunities, but what are the greatest possibilities. And one of my consulting jobs that I'm working on is working with Keith Breaker on this, uh, imagining this, um, what this land bridge could be and what it could be and mean to the historic Rondo community. Thank you. And welcome, Nick. Glad you could join us. Thank you. Nathaniel Nick Kalik, uh, lifelong resident of the Rondo community and the Summer University community, uh, president emeritus of the St. Paul branch of the NAACP, board member of uh, Reconnect Rondo, just celebrated our uh, 50th uh, wedding anniversary. Well, we never, never actually had a wedding. This is our first <laughs> yes. wedding. Yes. And... Um, just thankful to Almighty God to still be here and um, want to contribute whatever we can to this conversation. Well, thank you all for joining us. You all share a love of community. So I want to ask you, how does music contribute to community culture and aid your goals for the community? I can think of some songs. Uh, like people get ready. <laughs> <laughs> well, people get ready. Uh, fight the power. Yeah. Um, you know, Curtis Mayfield had a had a tremendous run, um, and I had all these songs set in my mind, but this, the senior moments have set in. <laughs> in fact, and, I have written mine down. <laughs> <laughs> and Public Enemy. Mm. You know. Uh, as I was getting older, Public Enemy came on the scenes, and the kids used to kid me a lot because I would play them constantly, All right. ah. especially Fight the Power. <laughs> mm. And, you know, when I think about many of those songs, uh, especially, you know, when, uh, when I was in the service, and, you know, that's the only connection we had, you know, it was over in the Far East, back home. We didn't have newspapers, uh, radio, or TV just a uh, a press release that was put out by the United States government. So you, <laughs> you can imagine how much we missed, missed. And so, you know, the music has always been, you know, part of that messaging. Uh, not only to give you a little uh, swagger there, especially if you were smoking that 
uh, funny tobacco, <laughs> but also to convey, you know, a message. Mm. It was very inspirational and and uh, really encouraging to to just keep, keep on pushing. And that was one of the main songs. Right, right. Keep yeah. on pushing. And so I'll I'll stop there. One one that triggers in my mind and it always surfaces is what's going on. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Marvin Gaye was a pretty powerful influence as as I think about the work that I even do today, mm. but even as a young kid, always trying to champion, you know, something, because something just felt out of kilter. Mm. And, and music really, for me, as I was growing up, was a way of really finding a sense of, oh, this is really happening. It's not me just feeling, mm. you know, like it's out of kilter. So yeah. what's going on? Yeah. And I think it's so relevant today, what's going on? That's the good news and bad news, actually. Yeah. But, yeah, it does make you think of today. And when I listen to you speak, and I think also of Gil Scott Harris, the revolution oh, will not, no. be not, be not be televised. Not be televised. Absolutely. That's Absolutely. Right. In the last poets. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness, You may yes. be a little too young to remember that. <laughs> <laughs> it might have been playing in the background at the house. I'm sure I caught it. <laughs> yeah, the last poets. They were serious. Well, for, for me, I was just did an interview for, um, before coming here, and growing up uh, as a black person, I have to lift up James Brown. Oh, absolutely. When he came up with Black and I'm Proud. Yeah, say it loud. It say it loud. Yeah. I'm black and I'm proud. And that really helped me in uh, growing up just being black and being proud because we just... Um, didn't have a lot of our own history being told, so and and for us to be um, proud to be black. So when James Brown came out with that song, uh, it was an epiphany. It's like I'm black and I'm proud. So I think of that um, in terms of growing up and the activism and working in the community. And then just I was thinking about songs that um, growing up as a kid, you know, hearing the music that your parents would play too. Um, that's how I got interested in jazz because my dad played jazz all the time. And then I remember my mom loved Dakota Staten. Oh, and yeah. I can remember the, the album cover, mm -hmm. that this one album cover, she had this fluffy white shawl on or boa and had these red fingernails. Her hands are up towards her face. And I can't remember any of the songs, but I remember that album cover, and she used to play her um, all the time. Now, when you say that album covers are something that are almost not existent, and I yeah. hear they're right. coming back, but I remember when my brother, who was 10 years older than I, he was the party giver. Everybody came to our house, and so we had albums everywhere, mm -hmm. you know, of everyone, and, and music was very uh, central. Mm -hmm. You all speak with such joy, um, and that reveals how much love you have for the community. So I have to ask, what song uplifts your spirit and helps you connect with community? Wow. There's so, you know, there's, <laughs> there's so, so many, many there, right? you're, and you're trying to, I'm not the best with, like, rem I can maybe know the sound and some of the words, but the name. But I just recently attended a conference, the Black Men Healing Conference. Um, and Van, you were there, too, that one day. It was wonderful. Yeah, and um, the speaker on Friday, he talked about his experience with um, Prince, and I've heard a lot of Prince's songs, but I don't believe I've heard this one. And I have written down the name, so I may not get the title, but it, it talked about when he wrote a song in his presence. He had visited Prince, and he Prince created this song called When Will We Be Paid? Mm. It was all about reparations. Wow. And he showed, along with that song, a video of that Prince had put together. I don't know if Prince put together, but anyways, he showed this video. And I didn't even, I would never even think about 
connecting Prince with talking about reparations because I'm thinking about my little, what is it, my little Corvette. Right. <laughs> you know, I, that's ringing in my head right now, that little Corvette. Or Purple Rain given Or the Purple today. Rain, you know, those songs. But uh, he wrote uh, that song and he played it. And I thought, how relevant is that to the conversation today in our community um, mm -hmm. on the administrative level, you know, with the funds that are being allocated for the housing program? And just, you know, thinking about uh, the land bridge, how now, you know, that was thought about when we were organizing that right. um, around the light rail about the idea of having a cap over I-94. So it just puts me in that mind of the work that's going on and our previous community work um, that we've done to lay the foundation for something like an actual cap or a bridge to recreate land mm -hmm. <laughs> that's gone because land is a commodity in mm -hmm. this neighborhood. Oh, yeah, you can't grow it. Yes, so uh, I just, when he played that song, when will we be paid? I just look at that as representation around getting paid in some kind of way. You know, I, I, I think about my personality. I'm always very, very optimistic. Um, I think, you know, possibility. Yeah, that's a song. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I can, the, the, the song that triggered in my mind was this idea of global connection. We're in a global time, and I can remember the, the song Love Train. People mm. all over the world yeah. Yeah. join hands yeah. on the yeah. love train. Yeah. I, and, and so I think a lot of songs like that really kept me forward thinking about possibilities, regardless of the challenges that are yeah. going on. And I think certainly church was all a part of that. Mm -hmm. Spirituals were a part of that. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, that's just one of those songs that I think are relevant today because I feel that we've got a community that is rallying, that it has some momentum to it, can think about possibilities that maybe it, 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 it was difficult to think about, you know, just prior to this point. So love train, mm. you know, we all have got to lean in. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter who you are. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter where you're from. There's some possibility because there's residual return for us all. Hey, you know, uh, I think we would be remiss not to acknowledge James Brown contributions to the women's movement. Mm. Oh, yeah, mm. yeah. When you say this is a man's world, world. Mm. but it wouldn't be nothing without a Not woman a and a girl. And a girl. <laughs> he was and, telling the truth. <laughs> and I mean, that was, that was just so deep and, mm. and profound and the utmost respect mm. for women, for but women. he never, ever really, uh, mm -hmm. you know, got credit for it. Mm. You know, when, uh, when I think back about this community and uh, September, I'll be 80 years old, and when I think about as a young man, what music meant to us, mm -hmm. you know, looking across the classroom at, at that fine sister sitting <laughs> over there and closing your eyes and not paying attention, <laughs> dreaming and wishing and hoping. <laughs> you are something else. <laughs> and, and every step of the way growing mm. up, mm. I mean, the music was about togetherness, mm. was about love. Mm was about respect, mm -hmm. and the blues also taught us how yeah. to deal with pain. Mm. Yeah. And as I got older and things started changing, it really broke my heart mm. that my children and grandchildren mm -hmm. wasn't able to get that part of the culture yeah. that we got that yeah. got us through some difficult times, times. sometimes yeah. because it took it to a whole nother level. Yes. And I know young folks like to beat me up when I talk about the, the rap and you know, I I think the negative impact because it wasn't an even about love, and sometimes I wonder, do young brothers even dance anymore? Mm. You know, with with uh, mm. with ladies. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing that really knocked me out uh, many many years ago when I went to Jamaica, and I've been hearing about Bob Marley and so mm. forth. Mm. That brother was a serious revolutionary mm. with his words. Mm. Yeah. They said at any time he could have 
taken over the country mm. and could have swayed the election, and they were on the brink of civil war. Mm. Mm. And this brother, young brother, stepped up and, and pretty much cleaned the deck mm. and said, wait a minute, we all won, mm. but you still got to fight for justice. Mm. Right, right, you know, he, right. didn't, he didn't go to that pacifist, we're going to just sit back and, and let yeah. the good Lord handle mm. everything. Yeah. We're going to work with the good Lord mm. and bring about the peace and tranquility yeah. that we need in this country because we are one people. Yeah. And I wish I could think of the song this fight song that you hear mm. at demonstrations today. Wow. Listen to the people. But anyway. <laughs> but we've, uh, we, we've taken a step back, far, at, at least in my humble estimation, in the contributions and the value of our culture with right. the music in mm -hmm. uplifting us. Mm -hmm. And I know there's some, you know, brothers out there that, that, and are trying to, you know, uh, do the best they can, but I just think we've we've got overloaded with with a lot of that negative stuff, mm. especially in uh, how we exposed and uh, the degradation towards our women. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. back in the day, that was mm. that was totally unacceptable. Mm. Yeah, and so I think we're slowly but surely trying to trying to climb out of that. And I hope in my lifetime I'll see that. Uh, transformation back to where it used to be. Mm -hmm. your, your response makes me sort of reflect back on two things. The last one <clears throat> about women, anything that was negative was sort of secret and underground. Mm -hmm. And I remember in junior high, one of the songs we learned was Annie had a baby, can't work no more. <laughs> ah. <laughs> oh, and you couldn't play yeah. it at home. And you, yes. <laughs> you know, yes. Like, if you dance, if you ah. had it at a party. <laughs> The other thing you made me think of um, <laughs> that I'm sure has changed was when I was in ninth grade at Central. I had a crush on a guy that was senior, but you know, you don't say anything. Right. But he knew it. Mm -hmm. And so Central had that sort of uh, balcony. It, you could be on the stairways and mm -hmm. sing down. And when, I, when everybody was coming out and I was in the middle of everybody coming out, he's saying, you send me. Ah. And I, I was so embarrassed. I, could, <laughs> I just, you know, the fact that he knew and the fact that, you know, uh -huh. ninth grade, what did I know? But yeah. uh, it was one of those moments. And, and it, that's right out of a 50s, 60s movie almost. Mm. I, I don't think anything like that could happen again. Wow. Um, but one of the songs... I think that all of you can relate to is uh, a change is going to come. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Sam Cook. Sam, yep. Mm. Oh, Sam, Sam Cook. And I understand he had to change the lyrics from the original song because some folks felt it was uh, offensive. To well, to he was talking about his experience. I, mm -hmm. I think it grew out of him trying to stay at a. a White's only uh, mm -hmm. motel yes. mm -hmm. and getting in trouble with the police. Mm -hmm. In fact, his, I was surprised to learn that about Sam Cooke and his music, that it was very political. Mm -hmm. um, and I just never thought about that, just like, you know, listening to him. Like, after l looking at his story, I said, and the sus, you know, the suspect, the suspicion around his death, even. Oh yeah. Um, and thinking that he might have, you know, been killed because of mm. yep. his music and his active his activism, actually. So you're right, Van. Yeah. And if you think about just how, with Sam Cooke, he was also entering into this crossover. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Where black and whites and mm -hmm. others were coming more together. And that mm -hmm. was that was undermining mm -hmm. the plan, if you will, mm -hmm. you know, of keeping people separate. So he he, he and and many others, but he in particular came at a particular moment in time mm -hmm. when crossover music was mm -hmm. emerging. You know, and I think it was a time when uh, performers were trying to get their music on the radio as their music yeah. with their picture on the albums mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because a lot of uh, white performers were taking their music mm -hmm. and getting the airtime and making the money. Absolutely. Yes. 
Yes. And so there were a lot of challenges uh, going on, which um, reveals how music carries a message for us of mm -hmm. the times. Mm -hmm. And so are there other times that y you associate with music and change and change is coming? Uh, what's her name? Uh, strange Fruit. Mm. Billy oh, Holiday. Oh, yeah, Billy Holiday. Holiday. Yeah. Mm. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. And, oh, the trouble she got in. Oh, the, yeah, oh, absolutely. John yeah. Lewis was, must have been talking about her about good trouble. Good trouble. Yeah, good yes. trouble. Yeah. True. Yeah, yes. she, she suffered dearly. There's no yeah. telling that they may have led her down that road of addiction. Mm -hmm. You just never, never know. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. also... I mean, Nina Simone oh, was yeah. another oh, incredible, yeah. yes. incredible. Yes. Yes. You know, I, I, I oftentimes, when I listen to it, in fact, I was listening to it a couple of days ago. There's one, you know, Mississippi got, I don't know if I should be able to I say that. Mississippi got down. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm with my, I'm, I am with my elders, you know. I just want to be sure I'm doing it right, you know. <laughs> they might tell my mom that I'm right on the corner. <laughs> Up, you know how it was. <laughs> but anyways, Mississippi, goddamn. Uh. And, but and it also brings it home because I, I I I substitute Mississippi, goddamn, for Minnesota, goddamn. Mm. Because I do think you know while it is years from where she was performing and struggling and the movement for social justice, it is so relevant again today. I always mm -hmm. want to make that connection. But uh, the documentary about, you know, Nina, what happened? Mm. Nina Simone, what happened? That's such a deep, a deep uh, documentary about her life. As someone who was a child protege, pianist, classical music, mm -hmm. right? And uh, the women who, the white women who supported her furthering of education around music. Mm. But then just the clicking in her own life and her own pursuit, uh, staying proud of being mm. black, mm -hmm. right? And to be witnessing. Young, gifted, and black. Oh, just yeah. incredible. So, yeah. Nina Simone. But the other thing I like about Nina Simone is while she had those harsh reality check mm -hmm. songs, she probably played such a wide genre of music. Mm. E e when I say classical, yes, but even folk music, even things during the 60s, you know, we talk about Woodstock and those mm. kinds of things. She was so diverse in her capability and her expression, yeah. you know, was very, very powerful. She's one of my all-time favorites. Yeah. Mm. Well, there certainly was a lot of songs, and, and none of you have mentioned Martin Luther King with the uh, We Shall Overcome. Oh. And that has got to be a universal song for bringing people together, mm -hmm. um, sung at every protest, mm -hmm. by every color and yeah. every gender. You're right. Yeah. International. Yeah. International, mm -hmm. which is a contribution, a cultural contribution that um, we should take more credit for mm -hmm. or, you know, lift up because uh, through song we've been able to make a lot of progress and change, or at least document it through, mm -hmm. through music. I, I, I think also, you know, Pete Seeger, who was the big um, white folk player and uh, um, really took that song and expanded it without question from the movement of uh, certainly uh, the march, but it became a global uh, song and representation of just how many folks were trying to reach and overcome globally. Again, the oh, yeah. movement starts in the story of black people and black struggle, mm -hmm. but really translates in a pretty powerful way. So Pete Seeger, I just want to make sure I make that connection. I had a chance to meet him one time as well. Who is this? Pete, Pete Seeger, Seeger. Okay. white folk player. Okay. Um, but I know he was very deeply uh, involved in the movement, but really took his cues from black artists, again, Nina Simone and others. Um, and it was a very, very powerful time, again, for me, um, mm -hmm. just a couple of years younger than y'all. <laughs> um, but I just really think 
what's what's drawn upon in terms of we shall overcome it, it's a classic mm. it's a classic yeah and even think you know in that same vein when you think about um we shall overcome our you know black national anthem oh yeah um how now it's really recognized and respected and once it was written um how it evokes pride, you know, creates that pride. Now we have our own national anthem um, as well. And, you know, we sing it and we stand up when we sing it at our events um, as well. So that just made me start thinking about um, the black national anthem. Harry that's Belafonte. Oh, I'm sorry. It. No, go ahead. Oh, Harry. <laughs> you okay. brought me to Harry Belafonte. Oh, brought you to Harry. See, that's where you brought me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Because he was another one of them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. Yes. In the yes. movement. In the movement. Really yeah. using music. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Really using mm -hmm. music. Absolutely. Dale. 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 <laughs> and he was Dale sexy. Like and when he sang <laughs> that, Dale. and he had that open white shirt on there, you know, it didn't matter what culture you were, uh, that brother could sing. Yes. Yes. They like come and, and they want to go home. home. <laughs> committed brother yeah. mm. to but the very end to the end recently passed away yeah yeah, yeah. and and Aretha Franklin mm. you know with respect in her mm. support of the movement yeah absolutely yeah you better think yeah you can stop the time yeah and, I, and I think that had a lot um in the same vein as what you Nick what you just talked about uh, James Brown, that mm. her song "Respect," oh yeah, mm. yeah. Um, really talked about respecting me as a black woman, as a woman, mm. as a black woman. Yeah, that's a powerful song um, as well. Mm. Indeed, I think about people like Nancy Wilson mm. back in the day, mm -hmm. Sarah Vaughn. We can talk about well, what Diana song? Washington. <laughs> I'm going to ask you each this. What song do you think best describes you and your efforts with community? Mm. Keep on pushing. I, I have you to know, go. I would have picked that one for you, too. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go back to James Brown and I'm black and I'm proud. Yeah. That really does it for me in terms of my activism. I mean, I went back when I said, Marvin Gaye, what's going on, y'all? What's going on? <laughs> what's going on? Yeah. I th well, I think the three of you, uh, youth may not be what you are, but gifted and black, you definitely are. Mm. And um, mm. so, so music has helped us. Um, it is been an expression through which we've been able to convey message and create images and motivate action mm -hmm. that is important. And so with your activism and with your commitment, the other question I'll ask you is, are you living into your purpose? Well, there, I, I'll, I'll just say this for myself. There's no doubt exactly where I am is where I'm supposed to be. Mm. There's no doubt about it, given my lived experience. Um, so I, I yeah I I would think so be for me too yeah. not saying I'm for saying us, yeah keep you, you where you at <laughs> but yeah I, I, I think so it, and I always uh, and I have to admit my um, where I am where I am at today is definitely divine intervention mm. because I remember writing every day I mean every day out to Bloomington mm. to my job. And I said, Lord, <laughs> you got to get me somewhere else. I, I, you know, I just don't want to go back to this job mm. and hear about cats and dogs. <laughs> Although I like cats and dogs um, because I know in my community, there's things going on that um, cats and dogs just can't solve. So I said, you got to get me a job working back in the community. Mm. And um, I won't go down that track, but um, 
through divine intervention, the opportunity came mm. that I could um, first get my feet back in and my hands and my body back into um, working in the community. And um, then there's been other mentors and opportunities that came and through different things put in front of me as opportunities that um, I'm definitely where I should be today. You know, when I think back, uh, being a child of Rondo, Cornmill Valley, <laughs> poor, raggedy, <laughs> didn't realize it at the time. Yeah. Uh, not ever knowing my father was raised by our grand grandparents, having uh, the system come through there and just rip us mm. from this wonderful body of of people and uh, and community. And then living with uh, a certain amount of um, trauma, not realizing why certain I was doing certain mm. things. You know, got locked up at 15 mm. for eight months in Boys Totem Town. And I remember a friend of mine, uh, him and I, Benny Hope, mm. not too far from here, late at night smoking weed, drinking ripple wine. <laughs> oh, ripple. <laughs> teenagers looking up. At the sky, asking God, you know, why are you putting this on us? Why are you, yeah. why are you treating black mm. folks like this? Mm. And so when I think about purpose, the love that I had for this community, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when I came home and, you know, went through some trials and tribulations, but saw some things that um, felt that we could bring about changes, mm. you know, from not hardly knowing any bad people, and I know there was some down on Rondo. Sure. But shortly after that, we ended up on Dale and Selby, mm. a slaughterhouse of mm. black men killing black men. Mm. We didn't have that on Rondo. We yeah. had after-hour joints. We mm -hmm. had clubs down there. But on Dale and Selby, the whole cultural change mm. where you couldn't wait for a bus on the corner. Mm -hmm. And then the drugs and so forth mm -hmm. and so on. And when I think about uh, Minneapolis just got a consent decree. Mm. And I think about what we went through here in St. Paul with mm -hmm. the police. Yeah. A long list of things. Yeah. But Almighty God sent us a guardian angel by the name of Corky Finney mm. yeah. from this community. Mm. Yes, yep. And reestablish some things. And when I think about the housing where they didn't want black folks on the other side of mm. Selby, mm. and we fought like hell, mm. even went out to the president of the city council's home and said, uh-uh, not on our watch. Mm -hmm. And now that housing that they didn't want that would destroy mm. the community mm. on the other side of the uh, so-called cotton curtain mm. That community has been thriving for 25, 30 years. Mm -hmm. You can't step in the door over there for under $300,000. Mm -hmm. But now, I'm, you know, when I reflect, it seems like in some areas we've taken a step back. When I hear that Minnesota is right up there with mm -hmm. Mississippi yeah. mm -hmm. in education and employment and criminal mm -hmm. justice and on and on, and health, it's just, you know, it breaks my heart. Mm -hmm. And so at this point, I don't know what else I can do at this old age. That's why I'm sitting back and letting these young folk, you know, No, step, that's why we don't leave you alone. You say, well, You know, to, to step up and, and just speak when spoken to mm. because something, you know, has to happen. So I feel bad that, in a sense, my children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren won't have some of the same uh, buffers mm. and... Uh, cultural walls of safety, protection, and mm -hmm. love as we had mm -hmm. growing up, that they're, in some ways, they're out there on their own. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, but they have you. For a little and the while. And that's why I has, said they don't leave him alone, because we... The community has you, and it's important mm -hmm. for all of you and others who are involved in the community mm -hmm. to demonstrate that sense of community Absolutely. commitment and love and mm -hmm. the long time it may take, perseverance, mm -hmm. um, to make change. But what we remember about Rondo is not just its physical. Oh, no, it's emotional. But it's spiritual, spiritual. connectedness. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and that music has been a message 
that has helped us emotionally connect with one another and keep on keeping on. And let me just say the the Reconnect Rondo project is the one that sort of rekindles spirit of hope and faith that we're going to regain some of the uh, some of the things that we lost, and that was that will help to rebuild that community connectiveness. You know, by all of us coming together to to put it in place. Absolutely, and I'm just going to share. I mean, y'all know my mama, Lurleen oh, Baker yeah. Kent, okay? Oh, yeah. So she moved to the Twin Cities in, in 84. So when I'm enthusiastically saying I'm right where I need to be, mm-hmm. these are all the lessons that I've learned about how mm-hmm. policy works, mm-hmm. you know, how government works, mm-hmm. and uh, how you lean in, mm-hmm. you know, uh, where you need to lean in right, and you stay vigilant, mm-hmm. always right. have an eye out mm-hmm. because there are always policies and there are always things that are happening mm-hmm. that are compounding against our efforts to lift our community. Mm-hmm. And so I always say systems, processes, tools, and resources. And this is what my mother used to say. When you understand how they function, then you can leverage them in your community's interest mm-hmm. and the importance of us all working collectively, collectively. Yes. to have this possibility in front of us mm-hmm. is tremendous. Yeah. And we need our entire community Absolutely. to step oh. in. Oh, I'm going to okay. thank you all for coming and visiting with me. And I think the one song that describes you all this ain't going to let nobody turn me around. Oh, I love it. There yeah. we go. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yes, got over it. Thank you to today's guest and to you, our listening audience, for joining us today. As Plato says... Music gives a soul to the universe, wings to the mind, flight to the imagination, and life to everything. Until next time, keep keeping on.